Welcome to another Digital Anarchy tutorial. I'm Jim Tierney, president of Digital Anarchy. And in this tutorial, we're gonna go over Flickr Free within Final Cut Pro 10. Uh, Flickr Free is our new plugin for getting rid of Flickr from time-lapse, slow motion footage, LED light Flickr, or restoring old video footage. And it does a pretty great job of removing Flickr in all those cases. And so we're gonna talk about the basics of it and I think you're gonna be pretty impressed, so let's dive into it. So the first thing we're gonna look at is some slow motion footage, and what we have here is a uh, Coke mini fridge that has a lot of flicker happening. You can see it really on the top here, it's pretty extreme, and it's being caused by the fluorescent light here. Now with slow motion, this is a pretty common problem, and that means that the electricity is cycling 50 to 60 times per second. And under normal conditions, if you're just shooting a regular piece of footage with you know, at 30 frames a second or 60 frames a second, you don't notice that the electricity is actually causing your lights to vary in brightness just a bit. It's happening so fast that the camera doesn't pick it up. But when you take a slow motion camera or a high frame rate camera and shoot at 240 frames a second or 700 frames a second or higher or whatever, all of a sudden, you're shooting faster than the electricity is cycling. And so it's gonna pick up the variations in brightness that are caused by the variations in electricity, as you can see. And so this is one of the things that Flickr Free is designed to deal with. And so you can see that we've got Flickr Free applied to our Coke footage here. And so I'm gonna turn it on and we can see what this looks like now. You'll notice that that flicker is gone. So it's done a pretty awesome job of going from this to this. It's pretty nice. So how does it do it? So the one thing about Flickr Free is we are all about presets. You will notice that if you click on the preset pop-up, there are a whole bunch of different looks, different types of Flickr. It's our firm belief here at Digital Anarchy that software should do most of the work for you and you really shouldn't have to do much of anything. And so Flickr Free is designed to, you apply it, you select a preset, and that should work in most cases. And if it doesn't, then you make a few tweaks and you're good to go. There's no analyzing histograms, there's no waiting for the plugin to do a pre-analysis or any other complicated parameters. Most of the hard work is done behind the scenes by the plugin. And so for what you see is a pretty easy way of getting rid of these Flickr problems. And so you can see that I've selected the regular slow motion preset and this works really well in a lot of different situations. So let's talk about the different parameters and what they do. So sensitivity really refers to how Flickr Free is analyzing the footage and whether it's analyzing the whole frame or just a smaller region within the footage. And if you have sensitivity set to around 10-ish, it's gonna be looking at smaller regions instead of the whole frame. And this works quite well with most types of footage uh, the one real standout is time-lapse footage, and that's the flickers happening on the entire frame, and so setting sensitivity to 30 is appropriate. But for most slow motion stuff, you want to have sensitivity set in the 5 to 15 range. Because as you'll see, if I play this back, let's turn off flicker free for a second. The flicker isn't happening on the entire frame. It's just happening in certain areas. So it's just happening on the roof of the refrigerator. You're seeing it on the sides down here, but you're not seeing it all over. You're not seeing it here. You're not seeing it on the sides. It's really just local to a couple different regions. And so in this scenario, sensitivity set to a low value works really well. And actually with most types of footage, the low value of sensitivity works pretty well. So we've got our sensitivity down. Let's talk about time radius. Time radius is how many frames before and after the current frame 
Flicker Free is going to analyze to figure out what the correct brightness is. So in this case, we've got a value of 6. So it's going to be looking at 6 frames before, 6 frames after, and the current frame for a total of 13 frames. It's going to analyze those and use that to determine what the brightness is for this frame. Now, does this all on the fly? You don't need to do any sort of pre-analysis or whatever. You just hit render and it does it. Now, one of the useful things in the Final Cut version is you see this cache frames checkbox down here. And what this does is as Flickr Free is rendering, it also caches the frames so that it doesn't have to ask Final Cut for 13 or 21 frames every time it wants to render a frame. So as it's going through, it really only needs to ask Final Cut for an additional frame for each new frame that it's being processed on. Now you can see how time radius works by looking at this handy dandy graphic. You can see that here's your current frame. If you have a time radius of six, it's looking at six before and six after for the total of 13 frames. If you crank time radius up to 10, it's going to be looking at 10 before and 10 after for a total of 21 frames. So that's a lot of frames for Flickr Free to be pulling into memory and analyzing. And so that's going to slow your render down just a little bit. It's not too bad, but uh, you will see a bit of a performance hit. And realistically, the values for time radius are between 4 and 10. 10 is the maximum. Uh, below 4, it really doesn't have enough information to work with. And usually 6 to 8 is the sweet spot. All right, so that's time radius. All channels should pretty much always be on. It tells Flickr Free to analyze the red, green, and blue channels individually, as opposed to all at the same time. And this usually, well, almost always produces better results, and so this should always be on. And it will render a little bit faster with this off, but you're going to see much higher quality with it on, and so the, uh, the small render hit uh, is really worthwhile. Threshold allows you to determine what percentage change in a pixel's brightness value is considered flicker. In most cases, flicker is not very extreme. You're really only talking about 5, 10, maybe 20% variation in brightness, and you're not seeing wild swings as if you had a full-on strobe light just going on, off, on, off. And in fact, that's too, too extreme for flicker free to deal with. But usually it's in the 10% range. And Threshold allows you to set what Flickr Free is going to look at as Flickr. Because there's lots of things that are not Flickr. For example, somebody in a white shirt quickly moving away and revealing a black background. This should not be considered Flickr. It's a pretty extreme variation, and Flickr Free shouldn't be looking at those pixels going like, well, what should we do with this? Now, you can have very extreme Flickr. Uh, and in that case, you'd want to crank this up to like 50 or 75 or something. But in most situations, 20 or below is really where this is going to need to be set. And then the last thing we want to talk about is detect motion. And this allows you to get rid of artifacts that are caused by fast-moving objects or fast camera movement. What happens in some cases is that you end up with ghosting or haloing which is basically the object from in a prior frame causing a ghost in the current frame. So if we were to move this camera very quickly, you might see, for example, the light uh, be sort of repeated as a ghost or cause a halo to appear that just really shouldn't be there. And so Detect Motion will fix that. Uh, it does reduce the effectiveness of the flicker reduction a little bit. So you usually want to try Flickr Free with it off and see if that works out for you. Uh, if it doesn't and you start seeing these halos or shadows or what have you, then turn Detect Motion on and you may have to adjust the time radius a little bit. You might have to adjust it down or you might have to adjust the threshold either to set 5 or a very high value like 50 to get the same amount of flicker reduction that you would with the sort of normal settings. But for now, if we have Flickr Free on, it looks pretty good with 
these settings. And so we're going to move on to our time-lapse footage. Well, I guess one thing I want to talk about quickly is the other presets. So we have three presets for slow motion footage. One is the halo removal. And basically all that does is turn on detect motion. And then super slow motion, which is usually defined as 700 frames a second and above. This sets the time radius all the way up to 10. It basically maxes it out. And the reason for that is if we take a look at our footage here, let's turn flicker free off, we'll see that the flicker happens over three frames. So one, two, three, one, two, three, and so on. Now keep in mind this is shot at 240 frames a second. If we were shooting this at 1,000 frames a second or higher, that three frames would now be stretched out to 12 frames or 15 frames. And so time radius has to be set higher to accommodate that. And if you're shooting at very high frame rates, say like 2,500 frames a second, Flickr Free might not be able to work on it because the flicker will, will be happening over say 30 or 40 frames. Now this is something we are working on and you should see in a future update, but for right now, it probably won't work so well on 2,500 frames a second footage. Really about 1,500 frames to 2,000 frames a second is really going to be about the maximum that Flickr Free can deal with at this point in time. But if it's below that, then it works really well, and you can see the results right here. All right, so let's move on to our time-lapse footage. All right, so now let's take a look at our time-lapse footage. So you can see that we've got a nice shot of the Maui hillside here. Now this is great, except that we've got a lot of flickering happening. We've got the sun coming out and some brightness changes there, but mostly our issue is with the overall frame flashing like it is. Now this is caused from the camera metering system. Usually when you shoot a time-lapse piece of footage, you're locking down the aperture, shooting at a fixed aperture, and letting the camera vary the shutter speed as necessary. And so that's what the problem is here. The camera metering system is causing a slightly different shutter speed on different frames and we get the flashing that you're seeing. Now this is the thing that Flickr Free was specifically designed to fix. And you can see that we've applied it. Now one thing to notice is that we have the register button up here. And if you need to enter in your serial number, this is what you want to click on. But we've already done that, so we're going to turn Flickr Free on. You can see that we've selected our time-lapse preset. We've made no other changes, and now we're just going to play that back. And you can see that the flicker is gone. We still have the brightness variations with the sun, but the flicker, the flashing that we were seeing in the clouds and on the hillside is no longer there. And if we can turn this off, we'll see what the original footage looked like. Again, pretty severe flashing, very noticeable. And when we turn flicker free on, that goes away. So pretty impressive stuff. Now usually with time lapse, these settings work really well. You might want to change this between 6 and 10, the time radius. Uh, 8 is a really good value for it. Sensitivity, as we mentioned, you know, because the flicker is happening on the entire frame, you want to have this set to a pretty high value. We really don't want it adjusting the flicker in regional areas, like just where the sun is happening here. We really want looking at the entire frame. So a value of 30-ish is very good. And then we leave detect motion on, have threshold set to about 20. And those are some pretty good settings for pretty much most of the time lapse footage that uh, we've thrown flicker free at. And so the last thing that I want to show you is rolling bands that are caused by LED lights or electrical interference or computer monitors or any of that stuff. And so this is what it looks like with the original footage. 
You can see we've got some crazy horizontal bands that are happening, causing some really bad flicker. And again, we've applied flicker free. We've used the rolling horizontal bands LED lights preset. And when we turn this on and play this back, you will see that that flicker is gone. Again, this is a use for flicker free, which we didn't actually intend it for, but has turned out to be one of the problems that we've gotten a lot of positive feedback about. Uh, we, in one particular case, we had somebody shooting a music video. They had some LED lights. The problems weren't visible on the camera. And they didn't see the problems until they got back in the post. And this was a fairly high profile video. It's on our website. And it basically saved the shoot. It was not something that they could go off and reshoot. And Flickr Free just nailed the LED flicker and got rid of it, just like you saw in this example. So it really does work. Uh, and these horizontal bands are something that you'll see from computer monitors, LED lights, uh, electrical interference. One thing most people don't realize is LED lights have a refresh rate that's very similar to computer screens. Most people know that if you're going to film a computer monitor or a TV screen, the camera needs to be in sync with the other device. LED lights have a very similar situation. They have a refresh rate. And if your camera is not in sync with them, you're going to get the type of flicker that we're seeing here. It's these nasty horizontal bands. And the problem with LED lights is that they're kind of all over the place and you may not realize it when you're shooting. So those are three of the types of footage that Flickr Free can fix. If you have your own footage that has Flickr issues, we definitely recommend downloading the trial version and trying it out on your own footage. We think you're going to be pretty impressed by it. Like I said, it's very easy to use. It's something that we really strive for here at Digital Anarchy, is to make the software do the work so that you don't have to. And what you see is a bunch of presets and a few easy parameters. And that's what Flickr Free gives you. So try it out. Uh, head on over to digitalanarchy.com. That's where we have the example videos, the demo reel, the free trials, all that good stuff, along with our other filter beauty box video. Great plugin for doing skin retouching. And uh, hopefully you enjoyed this. And thanks for joining me. And we'll see you in the next video.